Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to talk about bucklers and specifically different size bucklers. Um, and I wanted just to compare some of the strengths and weaknesses of it. Um, now I'm going to start off with this type of a buckler. It's basically an 11 inch buckler. No, let's call it 12 inches. Um, and uh, with this type of a buckler, the biggest advantage is that it is small. So you can carry this somewhat comfortably at your belt. Um, in fighting a buckler like this, basically the, the sword and the buckler are pretty much one. You can pretty much think of this as a two-handed sword. So, so as you attack, you know, you pretty much have to keep that buckler um, right by that sword. You're trying to cut down on different angles. You're not really able to disconnect the buckler from the sword. You know, you're, you're not able to do something like this because you really can't depend on this for defense. Uh, this is too easy to get around. Um, so the, the way I tend to think of a buckler like this is, you know, it's part of the sword. And when you look at the sword, you got the weak part of the sword, the strong part of the sword, and the strongest part of the sword. So that's how, how I see this. Uh, and you know, particularly if you get into, you know, you get into a bind, you come in and you do a press, you know, now you're free to come off, you know, separate from your buffer uh, and attack, you know, at different places. So, so, you know, so this is basically the strongest part of your sword. Uh, so that's how I think of this type of a buckler. Um, and, and again, like I said, the main advantage is that it is small, it is compact. Um, it's easy to, you know, walk around town with. Um, it still has the ability uh, to, you know, so that you can defend yourself against heavier weapons, you know, like pole arms. You know, so if, if you can envision um, a situation like, uh, you know, in Florence, Florence Italy, where uh, many times you had the townspeople fighting against the town's guard, um, you know, where the, the townspeople, the, the, where the town's guard was, you know, more heavily armed. They had heavier weapons. Um, you know, a buckler would would come in very handy. You would prefer to have a shield, right? Uh, but you don't. So this is the next best thing that you can have. Um, let me compare that to a full size shield. Okay, basically a war shield. The you know the great advantage of this is I can depend on my shield for 100% defense. My sword can be up here. Uh, and it can attack independently, you know, so I am free to, you know, attack around my, my, my shield, um, you know, so basically, basically this can be on 100 offense, 100% 100 offense, this is, the shield is on 100% defense. Um, so, so that is the, you know, the two extremes. You've got a small buckler that's compact, uh, easy to, to, to walk around with. You have a big shield that offers, you know, much better defense. Uh, but you know you can't comfortably walk around town with something like this. You know this is something that you basically take to war. Okay? Uh, now let's look at a few bucklers in between. Okay. Um, so let's look at a, a buckler about this size. Okay, this is a little bit bigger than that. Um, and and you know historically bucklers did come in lots of different sizes and shapes. Um, this is probably the most common one. Um, but, but you did get bucklers about about this size, um, you know, and I've seen them in all sorts of shapes, including like a leaf shape, you know, so, so they, they become in a, a lot of different shapes. Um, and again, with a buckler like this, uh, you are still kind of connected to your sword. You know, you can't like really, you can't depend on this for 100% defense while you attack somewhere else. Um, you know, so, so, so the two are still kind of tied together. However, you know, you do have better defense. However, it is a little bit more awkward to carry at your belt, okay? Um, perhaps, you, you know, but this is something that, let's say, you could comfortably ca uh, hang on your horse or your wagon, um, you know, and it wouldn't take up too much space. Um, so I'm, I'm of the opinion that you will carry the biggest buckler uh, that you comfortably can. So if you're in a situation... Where you're, where you're solely on foot, uh, you would probably want to have this one over here. Uh, if your situation is such that that you're you got a you know you're moving around with a wagon or or you're moving around you know you're, you're on a horse um, and you, you know you don't want to take up space with a big shield, 
I mean, this is a really good option. Okay, uh, and then let me go to a slightly bigger one. Okay, you know, with this one, I mean, I still consider this a buckler, buckler-ish. Um, it's not a full-size shield. I mean, you cannot depend on this, uh, you know, to protect you against arrows. Um, so, so that's why I, I, you know, I can't call this a shield. Um, but this is definitely the, you know, given a choice. I mean, if I'm going to enter into, if I, if I'm going to do a buckler fight, I mean, I would have, I would want to have the biggest buckler I can possibly have. Um, and it's still a buckler in the sense that, um, you know, although I don't, I'm not, I don't have to attack connected. You know, with something like this, I'm in a situation where I can, I can start separating my, um, you know, my offense and my defense. You know, um, you know, there's no possible way that I can block my head and my leg at the same time. Um, and basically, any, you know, any leg shot can potentially be a head shot. You know, because basically, you know, I can drop, the, you know, I can, I can fake a, a, a leg shot, come high, or I can come high and then go low. Um, and this can't be in both places at the same time. So with a, 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 a buckler or parry device like this, whatever you want to call it, I'm still in the position where even if I believe somebody's going for my leg, I still have to block my head either like this or like this. You know, somehow I have to basically block everything from top to bottom. Okay, I, I have to be in a position to block everything. Um, so I still have a somewhat connected offense defense so so um you know that's why i, I kind of hesitate to call this a shield um this is still kind of buckler ish again I, you know obviously this is not something i would ca comfortably carry at my belt um you know this is this is just way too big for that uh this is definitely something that you would hang from your horse um you know or, or your donkey or whatever you happen to have or your wagon um but uh um you know but this you know with you know here with this size of a buckler I'm in a position where, you know, I still have to depend on the sword for, for defense, you know, but at the same time, I can separate the two specifically, you know, particularly with that cone of defense, because as I stick this further out, okay, all of a sudden, you know, this, this really offers me a, a good defense at distance, okay, you know, up close, I mean, yeah, that cone, you know, that the angles change a bit, but if I have somebody at a distance, where let's say they're far enough away from me that they really can't hit the bottom of my leg. Anyway, uh, now by keeping this up here and fighting at at range, I can depend on a, a buckler this size or a shield of this size um, to you know to, to defend me. You know to defend me, and I can use my sword for 100% uh, offense. So the, the size of the buckler okay, uh, is going to determine. You know what we can do with the sword. Um, you know if if the two. You know how, you know how closely the two have to work together uh, in terms of defense, or if we can we can separate that offense defense. So some thoughts on that. Uh, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a member, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.